Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com, here to do your monthly intuitive reading for December 2021, the last month in this year. Can't even believe that the year went by so quickly. So for this month's monthly reading, we're going to be using the Syrian Starseed Tarot by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha for the main message for everyone. Your special message card this month, depending on your stone of choice, is going to be coming from the Wisdom of the Oracle deck by Colette Baron reed For those of you that are newly watching this video, I also do weekly videos to give you the energy vibration of the week, the astrological transits of significance, messages from our angels and guides from a particular uh, tarot or divination deck along with a special message depending on your stone of choice. So for this month, I'm going to be showing you three stones and you get to choose whatever you resonate with. And then at the end of the video, you'll be getting a special message depending on that stone of choice. A lot of times for the weekly readings, if you haven't already watched any of my weekly readings, I use sometimes my special intention pendants, which are stones or crystals that I wire wrap, and then I infuse with Reiki with special intentions, whether it be chakra energy, planetary energy, number vibration energy, zodiac sign energy, and then usually Archangel and or Ascended Master Energy also gets infused into those. If you would like to see some of those special intention pendants, they are listed on my website. And there's some new ones coming out for the holiday season. And I'm also redoing the pictures of all of them so that they look a little bit more brighter and appealing. So you might want to go on there and check that out also. If you watch this video and you are interested in the special intention pendants, Anybody that mentions that they've watched the monthly December reading and purchases any special intention pendants will get a little extra gift or surprise when I ship those out to you. Might be a stone or crystal, might be a piece of Palo Santo or some white sage or whatever else kind of shows up that I think that uh, I feel guided to kind of send to you. So again, through the month of December, if you purchase any special intention pendants and you mention that as you're filling out that uh, form that's going to be on my website when you make the purchase, just go ahead and let me know that you watched the December video and you'd like to receive a special extra little gift. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at your stones of choice for this month. Okay, so I got some bigger stones here. And these are all brand new stones. As many of you know, I recently moved from Florida to South Carolina. I haven't had a whole lot of time to go out and explore, but I did go find a small crystal store nearby here in South Carolina where I live. And I found three brand new stones that I don't have any of. I like to find new discoveries and then show them in my videos. So the first stone of choice is a slab here. You can see that this is a slice of yellow fluorite or golden fluorite, sometimes it's called. So the yellow or golden fluorite, this is a great stone for unity, intellect, creativity. It increases our understanding and logic. It helps to boost our imagination and resourcefulness. It actually stimulates, as you might guess, the solar plexus chakra which assists us in bringing ideas and goals into reality through, through intent and action. It also helps to promote a positive outlook on life and it actually helps us with outside of the box solutions and opportunities. So again, this is yellow or golden fluorite. Your second stone of choice is alabaster onyx alabaster onyx and this is a great stone for forgiveness of self and others it helps to bridge the gap between the physical and spiritual lessons it helps to clear away confusion provides mental clarity it eases anger and anxiety it helps to spark our creativity Using the alabaster activates a light of peace within the person, which nurtures the body. 
And this is also good for business entrepreneurs. So again, Alabaster Onyx. We'll show, you, show them again here at the end. And then the last stone of choice, never heard of this one, Purpurite. It's P-U-R-P-U-R-I-T-E, Purpurite. And it's purple, very almost the exact color of my purple background. So this is a strong spiritual stone for spiritual growth. It helps to give us psychic protection. It transforms negative energies into positive ones. It's a powerful ascension tool connecting our third eye to our crown chakra, helps to bring inner visions about our current life path, calms the nerves, and reduces the victim martyr complex. So again, our stones of choice for this month for the special message is the yellow or golden fluorite, the alabaster onyx, should put them over here and the purpurite okay so you can kind of think about that and think about how they look to you what you gravitate towards by sight and also what you gravitate towards with the descriptions that i gave you so we're going to start out by talking about the numerology vibration for the month of december now, to get that universal month vibration, we take the universal year vibration for 2021, and if we add those numbers together, we get a five. So we've been in a five universal year vibration, meaning it's the vibration that all of the collective of humanity is under right now. And that five vibration can be about change and redirection. It can be about um, lack of boundaries or lack of clarity or lack of groundedness, but it can also bring a potential for new opportunities, new people, new places, new things, and a lot of possibilities as well. So that number five is a very busy number. Now to get the universal month vibration for December, we're gonna add that five universal year energy to December, which is the 12th month of the year, and we get the number 17. A lot of times in numerology, if we get a master number or a karmic number, we do look at that, but the 17 is neither of those, so we're going to reduce that to a single digit by adding the one and the seven. Now, that equals the number eight. The number eight in numerology is about money, finances, personal resources. It's about a career path, life path, destiny path. It's about our own inner power or our own inner authority. And if you take the number eight and you put it on its side, it equal or it becomes the infinity symbol, right? So that number eight as the infinity symbol also means the balance between the masculine and the feminine or the balance between the material and the spiritual because the number eight is such a material number with the career and the finances and the power. Um, we have to balance that with the spiritual. Otherwise, what happens when we're out of balance with those things is we get too egotistical or over dominating or, or disempowering uh, energies or troubles in our finances or on our career path. So we have to balance that material energy with the spiritual, with forgiveness, with compassion, with unconditional love, with looking at the spiritual energies of what's going on around us. So looking at things from a higher perspective, trying to understand the spiritual lessons, all of that helps to balance out that material and business and career and money finance sort of energy so that things flow a lot better so that there's a nice kind of ebbing and flowing or equality here with those energies remember too it's balancing your own divine feminine and divine masculine because the eight is a very masculine number so we want to also be loving, nurturing, kind, receptive, and caring, along with that leadership, take charge, take an action, make a decision, and be powerful, masculine energy. Now, all of these things might be a focus um, for the month of December, especially, I think, with some of the astrology going on. We're going to want to look at the idea of power, empowerment versus disempowerment. And we'll talk about that here in a minute when we get to some of the astrological transits of significance. 
But let's also look at the number 17 as a double digit according to the tarot. I always like to look at what the tarot card significance is for each month. And the 17th major arcana in the tarot is actually a great card. It's the star card. In the Syrian star seed tarot, it looks like this. And so what is the star card about? It's about our hopes and dreams, wishes and visions for the future and kind of having these higher ideas or these higher visions or working towards that future goal or vision of what it is that we want to accomplish. If you think about it as far as your hopes, dreams, and wishes coming true, again, it feels like it's like off in the distance a little bit. It's, it's, it's not in the absolute here and now, but it's something that we're working towards. And you can see this here by the image of uh, this Egyptian figure that's kind of on some sort of a raft boat kind of thing, if you will, and traveling through the heavens, traveling through the stars. This uh, image is Egyptian in nature, so there is a connection to our ancestors of the light, whether they be our Egyptian ancestors of the light, our star brothers and sisters of the light, uh, the different star nations that are helping us. You can see there's a star right up here that um, the person is reaching their arm out to. They have an onk in their hand. So again, it indicates spiritual belief systems of where it is that they want to go. They have a staff of light in this hand. And it's like the universe is lighting the way. The universe is assisting them. The universe is bringing messages from the cosmos if you pay attention. So look at those aha moments and look at those serendipitous kinds of uh, experiences look at the deja vu sort of energies to where you might think about something or ponder on something and then all of a sudden somebody says something or you get directed to a particular place or situation that that brings up this kind of feeling that you've been here before done that before that's exactly you know what you were asking about and looking for an answer regarding so the star card is a message of hope and as we end this year of 2021 and we're kind of closing out a lot of um, old karmic cycles and old karmic patterns and purging some of that, which we normally do at the end of a year anyway, right? Just the mindset of the collective is in that mode because we're ending a year according to how we look at time. So because the collective is in that space, we're all kind of in that space of winding things up, slowing things down, doing self-reflection. Um, you know, what have I not done this year that I wanted to complete or do? Or again, these old patterns or belief systems, the healing processes that I've been through. So that kind of all increases as we end the year anyway. But we're going to talk about in a minute how we have a, a new moon solar eclipse in this month, which followed a full moon lunar eclipse that we had in the month of November. So that also pretends endings and new beginnings as well. So we're getting ready to move towards something different, something new, some future oriented kind of energy or situation. And a lot of these energies, as well as, again, just the mindset of us ending a year, supporting us in moving forward. But this is a very, again, positive card vibration amongst some of the other energies that we're going to talk about or that we already have talked about, which is that empowerment versus disempowerment energy of uh, December 2021. So let's go ahead and talk about the astrological highlights of significance. Now, I'm not going to mention every single uh, astrology aspect this month because that video would be way too long, which is why I do the weekly intuitive readings. But I'm going to mention the highlights. And actually, there's a fair amount of highlights to be mentioned for December. And as I mentioned earlier, we actually start out on December 1st with Neptune turning back to direct motion. Now, Neptune, in its more shadow side, rules illusion, confusion, delusion, lack of boundaries, lack of clarity, um, and just an overall feeling of being a little floaty or not focused, basically. Um, we might also feel physically tired with Neptune slowing down and getting ready to turn direct. 
So the positive side of Neptune is that it rules the spiritual realm. It rules our connection to our angels, our guides, our higher self. It rules spiritual kind of enlightenment or our psychic abilities, our healing abilities. Um, Neptune rules um, miracles and magic and things just magically appearing if we believe and have faith. So all of those things also Neptune rules. When a planet slows down to turn either what we call retrograde or turns back to direct motion, it kind of magnifies the energies of that planet. Now with Neptune and with some of the other outer planets, they move a lot more slowly. So we usually only really recognize those energies when they're retrograde or when they're getting ready to turn back to direct motion, when in fact they're coming to a standstill, which is called the station point before they turn directions. Um, so this is one of those station points. And because it turns direct on the 1st of December, we've been feeling this for probably about the last week, the last week of November, where you might feel a little bit lacking in focus or ungrounded like I did when I recorded the last weekly reading. Um, we might be having some boundary issues. We might be feeling a little bit more uh, physically tired or lacking in physical vitality. Um, we might be confused as to what direction we're needing to go in or what decisions to make. Conversely, we might feel, if, especially if we do meditation or spiritual practice, we can feel more spiritually connected um, to our angels and guides, more spiritually connected to our inner guide or higher self. And uh, in receiving visions or insights or messages from the other realms. So that's a little bit about Neptune. It's turning direct at 20 degrees of Pisces. And again, maybe talk a little bit more about some of these in the weekly readings. On December 3rd and 4th, this is when we have our new moon solar eclipse at 12 degrees of Sagittarius. Now we have to back up two weeks just really briefly. Two weeks ago on November 19th, we had a full moon lunar eclipse at 27 degrees of Taurus. Full moons are about completion, endings, letting go, healing, and the eclipse energy magnifies that energy and magnifies it for a longer period of time being that it's at work in our lives for a longer period of time because it's an eclipse. Now, new moons are about new beginnings and planting new seeds. And again, the eclipse energy is going to magnify these new beginnings, these new potentials in our life. Sagittarius is the sign that deals with an expanded vision, our belief systems, um, other cultures, other philosophies other ways of perceiving things. It is very prophetic, so there's a clairvoyant kind of connection here with Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a sign of blessings and prosperity and abundance and optimism. So this sounds like a pretty good new moon solar eclipse so far. You know, if, if any solar eclipse in any of the particular signs of the zodiac could be positive and beneficial, showering down many blessings, it's probably Sagittarius. This particular new moon solar eclipse is a positive connection to Chiron, the wounded healer, meaning there's more support here for us to shift our perceptions and belief systems and do some healing regarding our sense of self, self-identity, and self-confidence. It's in an odd in conjunct to Uranus, bringing some sudden, unexpected maybe redirections or um, illuminations on some level, something that we need to really pay attention to uh, on a higher plane of reality. Uh, Uranus to me rules the clear cognizance so that we're getting downloads of higher information or messages during the solar eclipse. And then lastly, the solar eclipse is going to connect with Mercury in Sagittarius, which is the planet that rules the mental realm, our mind, our thoughts, our ideas, our perceptions, and our communications. Also, Mercury is known as the messenger. So here again, we have messages that are being activated and coming through. So do something special uh, around that new moon solar eclipse. What new beginnings would you like to see? What are your intentions? What new seeds do you want to plant? Um, and again, do some sort of ceremony or ritual to kind of uh, put your focus on that and allow that Sagittarius expansion energy to come in and assist you with that. 
Okay, on the 11th of December, we have Venus connecting to Pluto. Now, normally I wouldn't talk about this in a monthly reading, but I, I'm going to because Venus is getting ready to turn to retrograde motion, which means she's going to connect with Pluto three times. Now, Venus rules love relationships, money finances, values, our sense of self-worth, or what it is that we value in life, whether it's value of ourself or value of other people or things. And because she's going to connect with Pluto on the 11th, and then again, after she turns retrograde on the 25th, which is Christmas Day, and then later for the third time on March 3rd, I thought that was something that we should mention. Because Pluto is the planet of power, power and control, or power versus the empowerment versus the disempowerment. Pluto rules death and rebirth and transformation and regeneration, transmuting or rising above old energies or subconscious patterns. And so again, pay attention to those dates to see both in your own life personally, but also on a collective level, where might there be some disempowerment energies or overpowering energies or transformational energies death and rebirth energies that are going on in your life or on the life in the life of the collective. We might see on a worldwide scale, Venus ruling women, she's a feminine archetype. We might see some sort of power control, disempowerment or empowerment energies surrounding the feminine or surrounding women specifically. And again, um, there might be empowerment energies in regards to money and finances, or you feeling more empowered and owning your values, um, or needing to kind of right an imbalance in relationships to where there's no disempowering patterns or circumstances going on anymore because Venus, she's going to want things to be fair and equal and just. She normally rules Libra, right? Venus normally rules Libra as one of her signs, and that's all about equality and justice and fairness within the area of relationships. So that's important. And then on the 13th, we have Mars, the warrior, moving out of Scorpio and into Sagittarius. So Mars is the last of those planets that we had going on in Scorpio. About a month ago, we had the Sun, Mercury, Mars, all in Scorpio. Um, Mercury and the Sun moved into Sagittarius first, and now Mars follows. Mars is about energy, action, forward movement. Um, and again, he's the warrior energy. So it's like raw physical energy with Mars. Passionate energy, especially in Scorpio. But that could have been a little bit of a difficult placement when Mars went through Scorpio. Um, again, that warrior energy and that Scorpio sign of the shadows might have been a little difficult, kind of er unearthing certain energies, um, either on a subconscious level within ourselves or in a situational uh, way within the circumstances in our life. Now it's going to be a little bit more light. Well, I mean, as much as, 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 much as Mars the warrior can be light, but it's moving into optimistic inspirational, happy-go-lucky Sagittarius that wants to expand the vision and expand into all of the possibilities and potentials. So Mars gonna put, is going to put his energy in that area of life, which I think is going to be a, a really good thing, actually. On the same day, the 13th, Mercury is moving out of Sagittarius and into the sign of Capricorn. So we have two planets changing signs that day. Mercury rules, again, our mind and our thoughts and our perceptions and how we communicate. And while it wasn't Sagittarius until the 13th, it was very kind of maybe chaotic, sporadic, uh, ungrounded, inspirational, optimistic, excited, excitable. But now that it's moving into Capricorn, it's and it's going to be in Capricorn until the end of the in, end of the month, end of this year. It's going to be more practical. It's going to be more grounded. It's going to be more focused, especially on business, career, life path, goals, ambitions. So that's where we're going to see that Mercury energy here for the next few days. On the 18th, we have a full moon at 27 degrees of Gemini. Now it's not an eclipse, 
but it's the first full moon following the two eclipses that we just had. So anything that might have been initiated at the full moon lunar eclipse on November 19th, as far as endings, completion, releasing, letting go, we might see a wrapping up of that or something regarding those energies come to a head at the full moon on the 18th. Again, that's at 27 degrees of Gemini. So the completions and the endings are regarding more of our thoughts and how we think and, you know, our, our mental processes, basically. And it could be about communication with other people to where uh, maybe there's a severing of some sort of communication there with someone else because Gemini, you know, is about that communication. Um, and then on the 19th, the very next day after that full moon, we have Chiron turning to direct motion at eight degrees of Aries. Chiron, of course, is the wounded healer and shaman. So probably in the week preceding the 19th, especially, probably already because Chiron is slow moving, we're feeling the Chiron energy. We're feeling the old karmic wounds, the past life situational energy kind of rising to the surface and coming up, wanting to be healed, wanting to be recognized. And again, it's all centered around the Aries energy of the self, our individuality, our confidence, our courage, our self-identity. Also on the 19th, we have Venus, uh, that's when Venus goes retrograde. I was looking at my notes trying to figure out what I wrote down. So Venus turns retrograde at 26 degrees of Capricorn also, the same day that Chiron turns direct. So again, even the first time that Venus connects with Pluto on the 11th, she's already in her shadow, she's already slowing down, which makes it a, a more intensified energy, if you will. Then she goes uh, retrograde officially on the 19th. So you might find things a, a couple of days before and a couple of days after within relationships or financial matters mm, being a little bit, um, let's just use the word wonky. Uh, of course, this is right before Christmas. So if you want to do any, you know, huge purchases, I suggest you do it well before Venus turns retrograde if you can sort of like a Mercury retrograde where you don't want to make big purchases because Venus does rule money and finances. You might find that there's something um, in the realm of money and finances that's not, you know, not right. Where Mercury rules more of, um, you know, the, the thought of the purchase, the, the uh, communication uh, surrounding the purchase and, and that kind of thing, Venus might be more about the value of it. Like, making a big money purchase and then after saying, oh boy, did I really need that? Did I really need to spend that much money? So, you know, it's kind of about what do you really value? Do you really value what it is that you're gonna be putting your money towards? And are you buying something of value? Which is the other thing, you know, Venus likes luxury. So you don't wanna buy something that's less expensive just because it's less expensive. You might wanna make sure that you're buying something that is of value during this time. All right, and then on the 21st of December, we have the sun moving into Capricorn, which it does around this time every year in December for the next month. Of course, the sun moving into Capricorn is the winter solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's the summer solstice. So that's a whole thing in and of itself. Uh, once we get to that weekly video, or maybe I'll do an extra special video on the solstice energies, but that's a time again of, um, first of all, for us in the Northern Hemisphere, the shortest day of the year, the shortest amount or the least amount of sunlight that we're gonna have before it starts to shift back into the days getting longer and more light coming in. And that's metaphoric for what the winter solstice is about, right? It's a time of going within, self-reflection, healing, contemplation. And then when the light starts to come back in, the days start to get longer, things start to, start to get illuminated, right? Okay, the, on the 23rd, I was gonna say the next day, but actually it's two days after the winter solstice on the 23rd, we have Saturn squaring Uranus. Now this is a pretty big deal too. Uh, as I said, a lot of important things going on here in this month, but Saturn, let's just try to make it kind of a simplistic definition here. Saturn rules the patriarchal system, the third dimensional paradigm, 
things that are more tangible, things like career, big business, money, people that are in authority, you know, all that third dimensional stuff. Uranus rules higher dimension, the future, hope, let's move forward, sort of like the star card. You know, to me, Uranus uh, and Aquarius, Aquarius actually does rule the star card. So by default, because Uranus does rule Aquarius, it also rules the star card, which is again, the future. Let's go towards the future. How can we make things better? How can we come into a new and better way of living as a collective on this planet? How can we open up to our uh, higher light bodies? Or how can we merge with our higher self or, or higher dimensional light bodies? How can we allow this download of information to kind of come in and so we can evolve and, and, and move forward uh, as far as our soul growth and evolution? So Saturn and Uranus are sort of opposite energies and they're coming into a challenging square on the 23rd, which is the third time this year that these two planets are coming to a head. I didn't write down what the other two time periods were, but they the both Saturn Uranus squares um, with the, the signs that they're in, because Saturn is in Aquarius right now, which is the sign that Uranus usually rules. Uranus is in Taurus right now, which is an earth sign, which would be much more comfortable for Saturn to be in. So they're in signs that are not in their comfort zone anyway, and then they're coming to a head saying, okay, it's almost like being at a crossroads. Here's the past, here's the future. Which way do you wanna go? Do you wanna continue on this timeline or even kind of travel back? Or do you wanna go on this timeline over here and travel forward? Now, that's not to say that old situations, old relationships, things of a karmic nature because Saturn rules karmic lessons. He's the great teacher of karmic lessons. Those things might come up for the purpose of us being able to resolve them and heal them, move beyond them and let them go. Learn what we need to learn from them, but move into this new direction, into the future. Okay, so only go here long enough to resolve. Um, now, there's no judgment here. You know, we don't want to say that if somebody's going, you know, going to stay over here on this path, it doesn't mean you're wrong or bad or, you know, not evolved or, or whatever. That's, there's no judgment there whatsoever. But just know that if you feel like you're in a crossroads and you're wondering, what decision do I make or which way do I go? The question to ask yourself is which way is in alignment with the evolution of my soul, which direction or which decision is more in alignment with the truth of where I wanna go next in my life and how I wanna proceed in my life? So that's, that's the good question to ask yourself. Okay, then on the 25th Christmas, that's when Venus connects to Pluto again while she's retrograde. So again, we already talked about that, might bring up some some sort of power and control or money kind of financial or career destiny path sort of uh, energy. Um, and then on the 28th, Jupiter, the planet of expansion and the ruler of our belief systems and the ruler of blessings and prosperity and abundance is moving out of Aquarius and into the sign of Pisces. So, now, Jupiter was in Pisces for a short time from mid-May through most of July, 2021. And then it went back into Aquarius. Now it's going to be moving into Pisces until, well, let's see here, until, I think my notes are kind of screwed up here. So Jupiter's moving into Pisces. I thought I was going to get through this without the Neptune thing going on. Um, Jupiter is going to move into Pisces on the 28th of December. And at some point, it's going to go into Aries. It's going to go, it's going to go right through kind of uh, all of Pisces move into Aries, and then it retrogrades back. And when it retrogrades in the early degrees of Aries, it retrogrades back into some of those latter degrees of Pisces for a time. So that by the time it moves forward again, or back into direct motion again, and moves out of Pisces and into Aries for good, by that time it's December, I do know that. 
So we're going to have part of 2022 where Jupiter is in Pisces, part of 2022 where Jupiter is in Aries. Now, if you think about Jupiter being the planet of expansion, think about it again, expanding the Pisces energy of unconditional love, compassion, spirituality, forgiveness, but also it can expand the lack of boundaries, the lack of feeling grounded. It can also expand the confusion, illusion kind of energies of Pisces. While it's in Aries, it's going to expand more of these new beginnings and new directions and new opportunities and expand our sense of identity and independence and courage and, and confidence and take charge ability. But Jupiter and Aries can also expand impatience, um, anger or aggression. Um, what else does Aries rule? That's a shadow thing. Um, just doing things too quickly, like jumping the gun before thinking something through. So I say let's focus and intend on the positive of both of those placements, because remember, part of it is where you place your intentions, where you place your thoughts is going to assist in co-creating your reality. So let's go with all of the positive of Jupiter and Pisces, and let's go with all of the positive of Jupiter and Aries once it gets there. All right, so that's pretty much all of what I have for the December highlights. Just also, too, as of January 1st, 2022, um, the sun is going to connect positively with Uranus, bringing maybe some potential redirection, surprise, freedom, or liberation energies. And also on January 1st, 2022, that's when Mercury moves out of Capricorn and into Aquarius. So... Mercury and Aquarius can be much more future oriented, which is right in alignment with going into a new year, right? Let's do the Aquarius thing of uh, focusing on our hopes and our dreams and our wishes and new ideas and new ways of doing something for the betterment of humanity and the collective. And, you know, Aquarius is very idea oriented anyway, whereas Capricorn, where it is um, for most of this month of December, or when is that anyway? Whenever I said Mercury went into Capricorn on the 13th until the end of December, it's much more practical, grounded, goal-oriented, focused on career projects, um, which is good too. If you're working on projects, having Mercury in Capricorn is a great placement. If you thought about starting a new career or redoing your website, for instance, Mercury in Capricorn is a great place good time to figure out what are my goals and how can I take the steps towards them because Capricorn is more of a step-by-step -step until they get to the goal kind of placement. All right, let's take a look at um, the message from our angels and guides before we look at your special message card. Okay, so the first card came out as two cards and when you know they did kind of come out together they fell out together actually when i sometimes when i shuffle the deck a lot of you know that i kind of wait for cards to fall out fly out flip out you know whatever that's usually how i get my cards for my weekly and and my monthly messages so this first card that came out as two flipped out so i did see what they were and i was kind of shocked because i was shuffling i did shuffle this deck and if any of you have watched the last weekly reading of the last few days of November into the first few days of December, these two cards were in that reading as well. So the first, and actually they came out in the reversed order too of what they did in the weekly, but the first card is the Master of Flames. This is like the King of Wands, the King of Fire, okay? So this is about taking charge, being an authority and taking charge of your creative ideas and intentions because fire or flames is all about the spiritual energy, the creative energy, the inspirational energy. The master or the king is all about, again, being grounded and focused and being the authority and taking charge. So putting that together, we're wanting to take charge of our creative energy take charge of where we want to go next, take charge of the inspiration that's coming through. And you can see that in this card, this, this man, uh, this Native American is very grounded. I mean, he looks very grounded, right? When we think of flames or fire, sometimes we think of sporadic energy, chaotic energy, um, you know, because flames are kind of all over the place, right? 
But this master or king of flames is very focused, grounded, centered. He knows exactly what to do, exactly what decisions he wants to make. He's going to implement them. He's not going to get thrown off of his balance. Okay. And he's going to move forward with his ideas. He's going to move forward with his vision of what it is that he wants to do next. The card that came out with it, again, the same card but in the other uh, separate order as the weekly, is the Eight of Flames. So it's interesting that he's so grounded and focused because the Eight of Flames a lot of times uh, usually means that there's a lot coming at you or there's a lot having to be juggled all at the same time. A lot of things happening, just like there's a lot of astrological energies happening in this month of December. That new moon solar eclipse in Sagittarius, Sagittarius is mutable, changeable, it's fire, it's all over the place. A lot of things happening with that. Saturn square Uranus also can have that feeling of a lot of things shifting, changing, happening, needing to you know juggle the past versus the future. Um, and some of the other energies, Mars going into Sagittarius, putting that energy, momentum into that Sagittarius mutable, fire, expanding one's vision, change, um, seeing the big picture, you know, moving forward towards that vision. So a lot of things happening here, a lot of things coming at us with the eight kind of flames, the eight wands, or a lot of energy going out. We're putting a lot of energy out in different directions, but this master is staying very calm and balanced through all of that. So I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'm going to say meditation and some sort of spiritual practice. Um, and maybe it's Venus being in Capricorn because Capricorn is such a grounded, focused sort of placement. Maybe that's what's keeping us all grounded. I don't know, especially with Neptune. Now, Neptune turning back to direct motion is on the first. And so that should start to dissipate after the first week or so. But the and you know, I'm going to say do a spiritual practice, meditation, walking in nature, um, you know, mantra work, affirmation work. But I feel like this is a really good energy here to start out the month or to have in the month of December that we're putting our energy and effort towards all these different possibilities and probabilities and potentials. And we're again taking care of a lot, doing a lot, juggling a lot, but in hopefully a grounded way or in a way where we're just being the authority for our own lives and our own selves and taking charge of our lives, knowing what we want and moving towards that. Okay, the next card, the second card that came out is a grounded card. So maybe this is part of the groundedness coming in. This is Major Arcana number four, and it's entitled Reason. In the traditional tarot, Major Arcana four is the emperor, and the emperor, as far as the Major Arcana go, is probably the most grounded of the Major Arcana cards, right? The emperor, uh, the number four. The number four is like a box with four corners. It's very stable, it's very secure, it's very grounded, it's very, uh, and, and this this magician or, or or magus or wise one, if you will, here. He's using his brain. He's using logic, which is another keyword for the number four and for the emperor. He's using his logic and his authority and his wisdom in order to manifest something because the number four is a great manifestation number. So between these two cards with the inspirational energy and followed by the Emperor or the Reason card that brings in a sense of security, stability, focus, and manifestation. So far, I feel like this is a really great energy. Um, and it goes back to the solar eclipse for me. Writing down your intentions for that solar eclipse helps to ground them in the physical reality. You could speak them, but I want to say if you write them down and then do some sort of a lighting of a candle or some sort of ceremony, writing them down helps to ground it because you're doing a physical, uh, a physical thing by writing them. So that's going to help ground your thoughts, your ideas, your vision 
into some sort of reality here and to assist them in magically becoming something. I mean, he's got his magic amulet here that he's working with. He's got, which you don't normally see with the emperor, right? You don't normally see, this is more like a magician sort of thing where you got the amulet like the magician or the wise one and you got these magical kind of images or, or energies that you're working with. Um, as well. So this particular Emperor card is pretty awesome because he's not just all about material reality, sort of like that number eight that we talked about for the month of December. It's managing or balancing the material and the spiritual with the infinity sign. He's balancing the material and the focus and the groundedness with this magical spiritual energy and using his logic and reason and his mental abilities to create something. And so this is really positive. Let's look at the last card for this reading. The last card, oh, this is a long video. So the last card is another major arcana. It's major arcana number 11. And this is divine justice. This is the justice card in the traditional tarot. So, you know, again, the solar eclipse comes to mind. This is like the, the karmic scales of balance. I want to say it the other way. The karmic scales of justice coming back into balance. So the lunar eclipse, the solar eclipse, the endings and new beginnings, the redirections, the things that are happening here. Um, and I feel like this is going to move us into uh, the month of January 2022, because that's when Uranus goes back to direct motion as well. And there might be some shifts and changes and redirections of energy uh, in that month as well. So I feel like this is probably an energy that's going to last for the month of December and into the month of uh, January to where old wounds, old karma, old things are being again, released, let go, purged, transmuted, and new things, new ways, new directions, new ideas um, are going to be coming in. These scales are already balanced. So it looks like we've done a lot of the purging, cleansing, transmuting already, uh, probably from that full moon lunar eclipse and when we had all that Scorpio energy. But know that there's still a little bit more to be done here. And this woman here, uh, Lady Justice, has a blindfold on as she often does. So she truly is trusting and having faith that things are happening the way they need to happen. Things are gonna happen and unfold in divine timing and just the way that they need to. And she's trusting in this shift of energy that the cosmos is initiating to bring things back into this sense of divine justice. In a way, this is saying that your soul path, your soul trajectory forward is being realigned. You're being realigned. Um, to the truth of where you need to go next, the next steps on your path. So you're going through this shift to kind of put you where you need to be, is what I'm feeling. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the special message card, depending on your stone of choice, everybody. Deep breath. So the first stone was the yellow or golden fluorite. Yellow or golden fluorite, people. Special message for yellow or golden fluorite people. This one is calling my attention. Building blocks, okay? So building blocks. This is number 28. 28, the two is about balance. The eight is about empowerment. They equal a 10, which is a one, which is about new beginnings. But it's time to create, again, the sense of stability, security. Take things step by step. What's the next step? What's the next action that you can take towards your goals? Don't try to go from A to Z or from zero to 100 all in one shot. This is about taking things um, patiently and slowly and building the sense of security and stability for yourself, whether it be uh, to have a secure relationship or to be feeling financially secure, or in building a new life with someone, or maybe you're moving or doing different things to your home to improve it, whatever it might be in your life. Take things slowly, look at the details, be patient, and create that sense of stability and security um, 
by taking charge too. You need to be a leader and take charge and build what it is that you want to create here. Build that sense of stability and groundedness and focus as you're looking for, okay? All right, those of you that chose the alabaster onyx, <laughs> I almost had to think of what it was. Alabaster onyx, special message for alabaster onyx. You know, the one on top here calling my attention, mending, and it says number 52. So number 52, uh, that equals a number seven if we reduce it down. The number seven is often about going within, um, doing some mental healing, some emotional healing, uh, having more trust and faith in yourself and in divine timing, trying to make sense out of things that maybe aren't making sense. Um, there might be some confusing situations or circumstances that have happened or are happening to where there's some mending or healing that needs to be done. Um, in this particular instance, we have two fairies, and so it makes me feel like uh, some sort of relationship matter needs to be mended between you and another person, maybe uh, romantic, maybe family, friendship, maybe even business, to where we have to mend fences. We have to heal whatever the patterns are because we can't continue on in the same patterns. So we can only do what we can do from our end, right? We can't change the other person or force the other person to, to see something. We can share our perspective and ask them to share theirs. And even in that, there can be some healing and mending that's taking place because at least both parties are feeling more empowered to speak their truth or share what it is they're feeling. Um, but this to me is saying that we're needing to mend something. The number five in the 52 is often about chaos and, you know, something that's out of focus or, you know, some sort of changes in relationship because the number two is about relationship. So whatever the changes in relationship are, uh, what they, whatever it is they are, it might be causing some sort of confusion and, to me, communication is always the best way to try to heal or mend anything, right? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the special message for Purpurite. Purpurite people, special message. Special message for Purpurite. This one's calling my attention here, kind of in the middle. That is so weird. I say it's weird, the never ending story, because before I started this video, I asked for a special message in this present moment for myself. <laughs> and this is the card that I got. And if I were going to choose a stone, if I were not knowing any of this and was going to choose a stone, I probably would have chose the purple, right? Because I like purple, obviously. So interesting that this is never ending story. And we have a young uh, little fairy here. She looks like she's a little bit in distress. She's sitting on the top of an hourglass. There's a heart. Uh, in the top part of the hourglass, it's number 37. So again, the number three is about our perceptions, our belief systems that can sometimes get exaggerated or dramatic beyond where they need to be. The number seven is also about our internal thought processes and perceptions. And so this is largely an energy on the mental realm to where we're looking at things maybe from a vantage point or from a perspective that might not even be based in reality, or maybe we're blowing something out of proportion. To me, the never ending story is like, you know, repeating same patterns. What patterns, what karmic lessons do you seem to continue to repeat in situation after situation or relationship after relationship or something like that? Um, it could be something about money. It could be something about career. It could be something about your health as well as relationship. But what is it that seems to be going on and on and on? And what this card to me with the number 37 is saying is to look at your own belief systems and where those belief systems came from. Go back to childhood and the belief systems or perceptions of your parents. And how could those be affecting what it is that you're going through or the pattern that keeps repeating? And then go back even further if possible and maybe if you know about your past lives or you know of a way to get in touch with your past lives, 
you know, how far back does this pattern go? Is it generational? Is it ancestral? You know, is it past life connected? It does feel like there's something to do with relationships here because we do have a heart here in this hourglass. The hourglass itself is saying it's gonna take patience and time or the hourglass again can be indication that we're going into past lives, that it's a time thing. We're going into the past or past lives to try to figure out where the root cause, if you will, is of this kind of heartbreak or this distress because she looks a little distressed. Um, but no, that nothing lasts forever and that we can change our perspective and change our perception and change our belief systems and like own our authority. The three and the seven adds up to the number 10 and the number 10 is about you taking charge and being an individual and being confident and courageous to, to say, you know what, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change how I react or I'm going to change what I'm doing or I'm going to change the situation so that I don't have this never-ending story anymore. So know that there's a positive in this. The universe is trying to kind of get you over the hump of like completing some sort of lesson before the end of this year potentially, right? So you don't have to carry it into uh, the next year with you. But have patience with yourself. Divine timing is also at play. So there might be something astrologically with the divine timing that's, um, you know, got to happen here. You know, something astrologically supporting this particular process. Maybe it's Chiron turning back to direct motion, right? Chiron's bringing up old wounds and then we can release it and let it go. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging in there. It was quite a long video, but there was quite a lot happening in December, the last month of this year. I send you all lots of love and light and wish you all happy, happy holidays, no matter what you celebrate and when. And we will see you again in 2022. Love and light, everyone.